Hello there. Uh, in case you don't know, I'm Andre. I'm a PhD student focused on AI and robotics, currently at Stanford University. And in the past few years, in addition to trying and occasionally succeeding to publish papers, one thing I've been doing with that uh, grad school uh, job description is publishing little blog posts and articles trying to explain what's going on with AI, and in particular debunk any ridiculous stories that come about in the media, which seems to keep happening, especially with AI. And so today, I just want to make this little video to tell you a pretty interesting story of how I started doing this. And it has to do with a particularly ridiculous story, a particularly ridiculous media narrative that came about in the summer of 2017 about two uh, or about chatbots that supposedly invented their own language. Right, and that supposedly the researchers designing this algorithm and these chatbots had to shut down the algorithm before the AI ran loose and stuff like that. And of course, that wasn't at all the case, but that was what the headline said, and that was what got me into writing these sorts of things. And so I'm going to kind of guide you through the whole story, and by then you might better understand AI and better understand the ridiculousness of some media narratives that come about. All right, so let's go on this little journey together. And this whole thing started in a pretty normal kind of uh, calm fashion with a new paper from a group of researchers at Facebook titled Deal or No Deal End-to-End -End Learning for Negotiation Dialogues. And it was a fairly standard work of research. It had to do with uh, two agents or chatbots negotiating, that is, sending uh, language tokens to each other in order to come to an agreement and have a successful negotiation. And if they succeeded, they were rewarded positively, and if they failed, that was bad. And then there was kind of a pretty common type of algorithm applied to teach this whole setup and have uh, this communication come about. So the paper was not necessarily super groundbreaking. It was solid research. It was uh, interesting. It had some good results, but it was well within the paradigm of what people do today. And it was using kind of established techniques and there was nothing sort of mind blowing about it. Uh, I think would be a fair way to describe it. Now, at first, when the paper came out, there was nothing too crazy going on about its coverage. It was a blog post and that was normal. And yeah, there was nothing all that out there about it. But soon after it came out, there was a tweet that highlighted a little uh, bit from the paper that said that if there was no penalty term to make the agents communicate in a human-like way, then the dialogue uh, tactics they invented would sound like gibberish, okay? The, the uh, language they sent to each other was just completely made up from scratch and overfitted to the task of succeeding in this particular task of negotiation and had no similarity at all to human negotiation. And the tweet basically said that, oh, this is interesting and this is heralding what you might see a lot of in the future. It, it literally highlighting a single sentence from the paper. This was a complete uh, minor deal in the actual research. But once it was highlighted, that was uh, apparently or seemingly inspiration for a, what came on in the media from then on. So after that one tweet, Right after, like a couple days later, there was an article in The Atlantic titled An Artificial Intelligence Developed Its Own Non-Human Language. Okay, and this is already kind of hyping up a story beyond what it deserves because one thing to really explain is these chatbots weren't developing a full language. It's not like they were talking English or Spanish uh, or anything that resembles a real human language, it was uh, not at all like that. It was at best a very sort of tiny, overfitted set of words that they could use to get to each other in shorthand. It was like extreme shorthand for this one tiny task. So it's kind of unfair to call it a language. But 
the Atlantic did call it that uh, within itself. Uh, but otherwise, it wasn't too crazy an article. It still kind of made clear that this is not a huge deal. It's pretty normal, nothing too crazy, okay? But that sort of set the course for what the media would portray this as in the future. And uh, afterward, there would be <laughs> similar takes that went way, way more crazy with it. So for instance, right afterward, again, around the time of the Atlantic article, the Next Web also published an article titled Facebook's AI accidentally created its own language, okay? Now there was this additional angle of accidentally, like the researchers did not intend it to happen. And again, this is misleading because this is entirely unsurprising. Within the original research framework, if you don't add a penalty term to make the agents communicate in a human-like way, it was basically to be expected that they make up gibberish and this extreme shorthand. It was entirely unsurprising and not very significant. But again, those kind of sound interesting, the idea that it just happened accidentally, and so that was the narrative in this article. But still, not too crazy. And apparently these titles got a lot of clicks or something, because there was kind of a continuation of interest in it. So for instance, The Atlantic then did a follow-up titled uh, What an AI's non-human language actually looks like that uh, showed what the language was, which was gibberish. It was, you know, very simplistic, very um, uh, overfitted language that could only be used for this one tiny task and nothing else. <laughs> okay, so still kind of banking on the hype of this idea, a little bit misleading, but again, not ridiculous. And then for a while there was a break, uh, but the story somehow came back. On July 14th, there was an article on Fast Coda Design titled, AI is inventing languages humans can't understand. Should we stop it? Okay, already getting kind of more sensationalized, already getting more ridiculous. Like, again, this is not a big deal. This is ridiculously overfitted to a tiny task of negotiation. There's no notion of needing to stop it. Uh, there's no notion of not being able to understand because it's really quite straightforward. But still, there was this uh, title. And then the day after that, on the register, there was an uh, article titled Facebook Trite Teaching Bots Art of Negotiation. So the AI learned to lie, uh, covering a different aspect of the article. And then on July 21st, the really over the top angle started to show up. So in the fast code that design, uh, inspired something in the Digital Life Journal with an article titled Researchers Shut Down AI That It Invented Its Own Language. Okay, and again, now you can see how it's getting pretty over top. Researchers shut down an AI as if they were not already in control. I mean, this is not like the AI is doing things on its own. It's just a program. You run it, you can always control C to quit it, and it's not going to do anything unless the programmers make it do something. Okay, so shutting it down is making it sound way more autonomous, way more in control of what it's doing when it's actually the case. In reality, it's all in the hands of programmers and they are in control of it. But nevertheless, these headlines are starting to get more ridiculous. And then by the end of July, it goes full on nonsense mode with titles like Facebook AI invents language that humans can't understand, system shut down before it evolves into Skynet, or Facebook engineers panic, pull plug on AI after bots develop their own language, or Facebook AI creates its own language in creepy preview of our potential future. Or Facebook shuts down controversial chatbot experiment after AIs developed their own language to talk to each other. And so on. There was like a whole stream of these ridiculous articles and 
from not very reputable sources, I should say. So these weren't like the New York Times, these were sort of more clickbaity websites, but still this whole narrative developed to the point that by August 1st, there were actual articles coming out uh, clarifying the situation. So it was an article talking about, no, Facebook did not panic at shutdown an AI program that was getting dangerously smart. Uh, there was Facebook pulls plug on language inventing chatbots, the truth. And then there was the article, Facebook AI researcher slams irresponsible reports about smart bot experiments. So it got so ridiculous that actual researchers got to see this whole narrative and were really annoyed because this reporting was so, so bad. Okay, it was completely misleading as to the actual significance of this little phenomena that was not at all surprising where the uh, researchers were in full control the whole time. And there were tweets from researchers that were, let's say, pretty explicit in saying that this is terrible and that all these uh, publications that ran these sorts of headlines were uh, being completely bad at reporting news and, you know, doing journalism. And it got to the point where the actual researcher who did the paper saw this stuff and posted on Facebook saying he was saddened and really dismayed by seeing this mischaracterization. And so this whole thing happened and I, like many in the AI sphere, saw it play out. And that was the spark that made me realize, well, maybe us AI researchers should really, you know, help the media and debunk these sorts of over the top narratives, you know, write articles where we make clear what is the case of AI, what is actually happening, what is significant, and what is over the top clickbait that is completely mischaracterizing what's happening and is just preying on people's perceptions of AI from science fiction as opposed to the real world. And since then, for about uh, three years, I and uh, many other people have written articles and have continued to see a lot of different hype stories and mischaracterization. Uh, a bit less, this was definitely an outlier with this Facebook chatbot story. I mean, it there's been probably not many cases of a sort of avalanche of publications with headlines that are just utterly ridiculous. But still, it does show how in media, sometimes when a compelling narrative that drives clicks develops, people pick up on it, and then it kind of gets a life on its own, even if it has barely any correspondence to the truth. So that's the story. I hope uh, that was interesting. Feel free to leave comments with any questions or any requests for any other videos on topics with respect to AI I could make. I mean, feel free to uh, like and subscribe as the usual with YouTube. But uh, otherwise, yeah, just give me feedback because I find this sort of video fun and I might want to make more in the future.